taking emotion out of your decisions so that you can do the things that are right for the company and right for you. If it's right for the company, it'll be right for you. Do you get what I'm saying? If you create a good company that pays people well, that makes good profit, that does things right. All right, I am getting ready to spray this house here. We got Johnny in the back with the Graco, and I'm in the front with the uh, Titan. Hey, Daddy. Say get that on your video. Is this your video? Yeah, but it's just a talking video, baby. Yeah, we're boring. I'll think of my for that. Like and subscribe. Before we start this new job today, I just kind of want to go over a few pointers on things that you can look for on your house to see if your house needs a, a paint job. So one of the first things you're going to look for is um, chipping peeling paint um, a lot of the times that's accompanied with uh, wood damage so if you look here these are chipping out and they're definitely peeling away so you got chipping and peeling we have cracks in the wood so all this water would seep in it's going to expand in the wood it's going to help rot it away and after a, a certain duration of time that turns into this kind of mess and this is where this wood here we are going to have to replace we'll have to pull it out like this right here, putting expansion foam is not a fix for that. We'll pull these out, we'll put new wood in, we will fill this with caulking, and then we will uh, put a piece of trim on it like that. Caulk around the trim when it's done so everything is sealed up and stays dry. A big part of the paint is to protect your home. While it makes it look good, it's really saving you from replacing the siding every few years. It's gonna protect the wood on the house. Now this is a situation where you're landscaping. Uh, it can become a problem with your house. And what we've had here is we actually have some decorative ivy and it's climbed up and we're getting these. When it's pulled off the house, it'll leave part of the vine behind on the house and it's just gonna kinda of tear it up and damage it. And in some cases, uh, like right here, it'll actually peel some paint. If it leaves a bare spot, that's a spot where wood is exposed and can potentially cause a problem down the road. <coughs> so let's go ahead and walk around and we'll spot a few more things. Obviously there's cracking in the wood and things of that nature. Um, now up here on the garage, there's some discoloration, okay? So you can kind of see, um, and it's typical, so it was a darker gray, but it's faded out real bad, okay? Not so bad over here. That looks like it's actually been touched up. It looks like there was some wood rye here. We are not fixing that today. We're just gonna kind of smooth it out the best we can, and then we're gonna paint over it again. Um, that's all particular client. So what you end up here is you get some chalking, okay? And if you rub it, you'll actually, well, most of the time you can see it's almost like a dust or a sediment. This isn't too far along, but it is definitely some discoloration. That's the paint starting to break down. And you can probably see it on the doors too if you do this. Um, well, you can see it a little bit on my fingertips. So it's in process of breaking down uh, and then it starts chalking and then it will, you know, start chipping and peeling and, and fading away. Uh, overall, the house, it's just kind of dirty and what we're going to do first is actually power wash it. We want a clean surface. It doesn't have to be immaculate spot free. When we power wash, it's not necessarily cleaning it so that it looks beautiful again. We're cleaning it so that we have a surface that doesn't have a lot of dust on it. Because when we spray new paint on, we don't want it to um, come off easy. We want it to bond real well to the, to the actual uh, surface. So having a clean surface really helps with that. Moving along in the backyard. This is real common on pillars. You'll see lower that there is bare wood. Anytime you see bare wood, that is an indication that your paint has gone too far out. It needs painted almost immediately, okay? Um, because it's just gonna get worse at that point. It's not protected. Now in the back, it's not too bad, um, but we still see some discoloration. That's, that's a big factor. So up top, you can see up here, where it sees more sunlight, it's discolored. Underneath, it's a darker gray. That's not just shadow. I know my camera doesn't really pick it up, but it's not just shadow. And then down here, it's uh, a little bit lighter. And you can really see it on like spots here where it hits the sun all day. So 
that's just something to kind of take into consideration the biggest thing is like I said you want to seal it up and you want to make sure that you're not getting any water damage on your house uh, here would be a situation so right here if you see this kind of situation it's time to have this recalked this doesn't necessarily mean you need to have it repainted uh, it could be caulked and then painted this here looks like there's actually been some house settling uh, which is a common thing in our area. So that's a real big gap. I would almost guarantee that this house has been peered at some point in time and uh, We've had some settling and the walls kind of falling away from the windows It's pretty common in this area and while we're at it when we're dealing with that we'll caulk this up as well So I mean overall we want the house to be in much better shape when we leave Which is obvious we're being paid to paint a house. We want it to look better we want it to be better. So, uh, all my paint jobs, I guarantee for at least three years. Um, so that's touch up. If there's any peeling or chipping or any workmanship that's uh, an issue, like all the paints are guaranteed for five or ten years. Um, caulking is guaranteed for forty years, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to last that long if it's not applied correctly. If the right prep work's not done, it's not going to last that long. So, all my workmanship is guaranteed for at least three years. If for any reason there's something that goes wrong with your house, if you do hire us, and um, it's not up to standards, but you can call me in that time. I'll come take a look at it and I'll fix it. No big deal. Like, that's not a problem at all. We haven't had a call back, by the way. But that is exactly... That's what I would expect. If I paid somebody to paint my house or do some woodwork or do anything else if something was wrong if I noticed something was wrong I would expect it to be fixed I would be disappointed if it was anything otherwise so I like to treat my business the same way now um, having said that we do a final walkthrough I walk through Johnny walks through um, if my wife is on site she walks through we all nitpick the job and find every minute flaw that we can see and then we ask our client to do the same hey come out take a look we want to do a final walkthrough we <laughs> we really don't get a lot of uh, issues when it comes to the final walkthrough with um, with our client we don't we don't get a lot of problems and the reason being is because we are so strict about what what passes our quality standard that uh, you know it's it's not there's normally nothing left for the client to point out um, that's just the way we'd like to handle it so there are a few odd things on this one like right here I asked him if he wanted this repaired this was actually done on purpose so he could get his vehicle in there and you can kind of see his vehicles mirror scuff this a little bit so that's kind of odd but whatever makes him happy so an overview before gray and chipping they may change the color of the shutters it's all up to them we're still discussing that and after we're gonna make it look real pretty Johnny's gonna get started on power washing I've been holding them up to make the video first year in business in the painting business right um, before this I painted my own house um, interior exterior I've helped paint with my mother-in-law when I worked for her because uh, she did a lot of remodel stuff it was it was a uh, overall a great year um, the painting business did really well I was able to take principles that were from the uh, lawn care business and just apply them straight into painting and really I just look at it even though it's set up as its own business I look at it as an extension of my lawn care business because in reality it's an extension of me um, you know and it just comes down to your business model do I think diversification is a good idea absolutely not look for the uh, simplest forms in your service so like um, I was going over this with my wife uh, last night um, or well yesterday we we're working on all of our emails and stuff right um, getting stuff together and one of the things I'm doing is kind of making them a plug-and-play generic emails so that I can actually release them to you guys down the road so that is something you'll you'll get down the road um, but that way you can um, have like a plug-and-play email or something that you can work on for you 
and um, basically how it's going to work is um, I go up with an outline of all my services and then each service I have an email for it. so for me you know for our lawn business we only provide a handful of services um, we've got mulch installation real early in the spring about this time of year in January and in February February I like to knock that out before the spring hits I used to just do it when the customers wanted the problem with running your business to how the customer wants is that you're just all over the place so you need to train your customers um, that you're going to do business your way this is how we do it when we do it this is why we do it that way and uh, you know that that goes down to every aspect from performing the job communication and um, you know getting paid all you, everywhere you're at you need to have your unique system to make it perform to best benefit your business so anyways as far as services that we provide lawn service wise uh, mulch installation we got to do spring cleanups right after that which oftentimes mulch installation spring cleanup and even like lawn seating are combined together and uh, you know then we go into mowing we do bush trimming on a 30-day cycle um, and I try to rotate through the property, so maybe uh, half of them are this month, half of them are next month, you know what I'm saying? Uh, then I go into uh, the end of the year, because we're mowing all the way through. I just focus on mowing and bush trimming through the growing season. And then during the fall, as we start cooling off, so you get into um, September and October, or even August when it starts slowing down. So August, September, October, where you start getting that slowdown. I pick up and I do power washing so that I can fill in those bare spots and actually keep the cash flowing correctly. Um, you know, keeping our revenue as high as possible. So that allows me to fit in an extra service when we slow down. Oftentimes when we slow down, we're like, okay, cool, it's time to rest. Now it's time to speed back up. Um, but then we go from power washing and mowing right into leaf cleanups. Um, and then from the leaf cleanups, that's kind of our main focus for the rest of the year. And we do um, offer gutter cleaning as well. Uh, I try to stick to like just single stories. So like this house here, if this house had gutters on it, yeah, well it does. It's really easy to do gutter cleaning on a house like that. Uh, the reason why is you can get on top of the house on the roof and just walk the roof line with your um, backpack blower and blow it all out. Uh, keep in mind that can be a messy scenario. So if you get like a lot of water build up in there don't ever blow them out near cars and stuff like that because it will get on the car and then you're paying to have their car washed as far as like what I charge for um, gutter cleaning normally it's like 50 to 100 it just really all depends uh, we are transiting transitioning to a hundred dollar minimum on gutter cleaning and um, the reason being is I'm getting on top of a, a roof and uh, I don't really like doing it you got to drag a ladder around stuff like that so I can do it it's just I've, I've noticed the less services I provide in my business and uh, the more I niche down the more income we actually create that doesn't mean I can't bring that on later but it means that I'm focusing on less so like I'm not doing a bunch of uh, crazy landscaping installs and stuff like that I have done them in the past I really enjoy doing them and I want to do more and just because I want to do more doesn't mean it's beneficial to the company I have to I have to plan it out and be strategic so in a few years that is something we will offer again as we grow but right now it's filling in and raising the revenue as much as we can by honing down on a few services so I'm not sure what time it is it's getting late I'm gonna wrap it up uh, so far I have the side of the house primered down the side here um, over here and up to the garage we gotta chip away and uh, scrape and caulk the other side of the house um, down the side the very back will be a little bit easier so maybe we'll get to start spraying tomorrow maybe not we'll just have to see man it's something sometimes it plays out like this takes a little longer than anticipated like we were wanting to be done we should have been done uh, today or tomorrow because um, normally a house like this would take about three days the first day we showed up and we got 
seven hours in but you know a little bit of that time is spent organizing the box and going to get some materials and things of that nature um, just kind of waiting out the rain to be honest because we power washed it in between the rain and you know we do it in the rain but um, there was a lot of thunder and lightning at the, at the moment so we had to stop you don't work in the, in the lightning that's not safe in the rain if it's a light sprinkle that's okay if it's a full out wash out rain no absolutely not um, but if it's just a light sprinkle hey that's kind of nice man it's like a swamp cooler of course the shirt's like that right now too sweating it all day it gets nasty I smell pretty ripe right now I am ready to be home but but the job's significantly closer I normally wouldn't go this excessive with priming but the fact is you got to do what you got to do and uh, there's a lot of bare spots and uh, little micro cracks so in order to avoid back rolling tomorrow if you roll out primer ahead of time you might not have to back roll and it just all depends I may have to back roll too but if it covers up all those little cracks I might not have to it may have real good coverage we'll just have to see how it plays out I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes with two sprayers but you know I mean overall it's not a hard one to spray you got a lot of trim and stuff but shutters are down they don't even know if they're gonna put those back up so we may not have to spray them they might want something new we're just kind of seeing but it's all one color so we won't have to shield off the gutters or you know I mean that's that's kind of nice when we get to spraying oops you know that's kind of nice when we get to the spraying it might not be that bad so I guess I'll tie in with you tomorrow and let you know how it's going but uh so far today, I call today a win. Not a massive win, but you're always winning if you're making progress and making money and pushing forward. This company's gonna be huge down the road, man, huge. Sometimes you gotta grind it out. You gotta put in your, uh, your time, you know what I mean? You gotta lay the groundwork. Right now, that's what I'm doing. It's all a game. And I'm playing out the cards and I'm seeing where it's going and I'm being strategic and uh, I know it's gonna be it's gonna be good see it's an, an intelligent investment since I've got several years in on the landscaping lawn let's call it lawn care it's not landscaping since I got several years in on lawn care it's gonna be turning into something good here because I can take all that knowledge put it in here and apply it not have emotion in my decisions that's a big factor, taking emotion out of your decisions so that you can do the things that are right for the company and right for you. If it's right for the company, it'll be right for you. Do you get what I'm saying? If you create a good company that pays people well, that makes good profit, that does things right, that doesn't, you don't want to be the guy that's going out of your way to find a cheaper product. It's okay to use a, a, a discounted product. It's the same price. Um, you know you get your your contractor discount or whatever that's that's cool whatever but I'm saying like don't be the scuzzy guy that's going around doing a cheap job not following through with what you said uh, overcharging I mean the, the market will kick you out if you're unethical I paid <laughs> I had a, situ a situation where somebody um, accused an associate of passing out door hangers of stealing a turtle recently and uh, I got a call about it a week later so the odds are it wasn't me or I know it wasn't me but it wasn't my team and um, regardless I replaced the turtle floor and the reason being is I explained to her hey I don't know if it was it's it was in her front yard in a, in a landscaping bed with two timbers high turtles climb and I explained to her, hey, that turtle could have climbed out. A kid, neighborhood kid could have picked it up. Somebody could have picked it up and taken it out thinking it was stuck. A uh, predator like a dog or a cat could have came and ate it. Something of that nature. But I bought a new turtle for her. It was a, uh African sequoia turtle. I don't, I don't know. Not, not sequoia. Something. Something of that nature. If you know, tell me in the comments. I'll, I'll put up a picture. Here's a picture. Uh, anyways. <laughs> I replaced it 
because it's the right thing to do. Even if there's, it, it wasn't my team. I can guarantee it. But the fact is, what I did is I actually spent 60 bucks to protect my name, okay? I spent $60 to protect our business name, take care of her so that she goes, well, you know, maybe it wasn't them, but he took care of it. And uh, instead of getting something where we had an accusation of theft online, nowadays people can gut your business. So what's cheaper? Trying to uh, go through a court system or go through Google and get this allegation of theft off? What's more stressful? Or just... It's 60 bucks, man. Psh, get it out of here. I'm literally paying not to mess with it later. Do you know what I'm saying? And if you treat business the same way, I'm paying not to have the headache later. I am paying for good products now and charging you for the right solution so that I don't have to worry about it later. That's the correct way of being in business. They are trying to get a solution. You're providing it because they have a problem. You've got the solution. Give them the right thing and be done with it. Gotta go. Okay, so uh, the conversation I was having previously um, was talking about honing down on the services I provide. Um, and I spoke about for the lawn service. And now, as far as the painting business goes, and like I said, that's an extension of my lawn business is how I, I look at it. Uh, as far as the painting business goes, if I look at that just as a model for itself though, and don't look at it as a connected uh, service, the ideal type of job for me is a single story house, um, you know, a house similar to this one, single story ranch style house, um, that's a, basically a uh, two to four day project max. Uh, that's, that's kind of, I mean, I'd do a bigger project, but I'm looking for basically the in and, in and out cookie cutter type track homes um, or the older homes that are like this. I mean, for me, I'm, I'm looking to probably a 15 to 20 year old house, sometimes older. This house is probably built in the 70s. Um, but the problem is when you get to the real old houses, you end up with a lot of wood rot and wood repair. I don't want to do wood repair. I'll do some. I'll do minimal wood repair, but we're not doing a lot of siding. I don't want to do a lot of interior work. Um, it's just very complicated on the estimating. On the exterior, it's so easy. You just, you know, you're able to, I'm, I'm looking for a fluid transition from job to job to job to job so that it has a quick turnaround and it's it's less time that I have invested in it personally. So ideally, you know, like right here on the screen, that's Johnny. Um, Johnny no longer works with us, but he, he was an employee and he was a good employee. Um, some issues got in the way and unfortunately he doesn't work for us anymore. Um, that's kind of how it goes, but ideally I would like to have employees doing the production for me. And then my job is to focus on getting more jobs lined up for them and making sure they're efficient to do the job. So if, if I'm looking at just that aspect, what I want to do is have a replicatable service. So basically I have a template for estimating that I'm just able to hammer these out, right? And it's all about plugging in estimates. Now I can take that template and make it personalized so that it's for that person, but I'm able to say, this is what we do on the jobs. This is what you can expect. This is, you know, the warranty that I offer and the guarantee and, you know, just really cater in that we're here to take care of you. And um, by doing that and focusing on one style house, like I'm not looking for custom houses. I'm not looking for the crazy Tudor houses. I've done a couple Tudor houses. They're kind of, they're, they're actually really fun, but the problem is they're a lot of work and a lot of detail and detail adds complication. See, like this house, it's a single shot house. Maybe it was one or two colors, that's easy. This one, brick, everything, one shot. You know, when it comes to painting, it's basically minimal on shielding, minimal on, on uh, actual prep work. We taped off the windows and the doors and stuff like that. But I mean, it's just so easy to knock these, um, these type of houses out quickly and make make good income doing it. All right. I am 
getting ready to spray this house here. We got Johnny in the back with the Graco, and I'm in the front with the uh, Titan. So this is how it looks right now. We've shielded off all the peaks. Everything's caulked, primed, sanded back, scraped. On this window here, we have the liquid mask. And we'll just cut that out and peel it out when we're done. Everything else is taped off. Back door's taped off. This one's left open, but we have it taped around the edge so that we can tape it off real quick when we get ready to go once the back door's uh, completed. And once the back door is completed, then we have no problem opening, you know, making it to where they can get out of that one. Uh, yeah, same thing over here, all shielded up, ready to go. And the Titan 440. What? Cool, okay. Well, wiped that's hot, dude. Yeah, it is very hot. Heat index is, you want to know? 100,000. 116. <laughs> 116, I've seen 115. That's what Rachel said. I left this clip in the video because I think it is important. Um, I think it tells part of the story of, you know, when you're out working outside, the type of employees we're going to have, a lot of different scenarios. Um, I'll make a video just talking about smoking down the road, but as far as do I allow them to smoke on the property, the short answer is yes, as long as it's not around the clients anywhere close to their house and they're picking up the uh, cigarette butts and making sure that they're put away like in a like in a pop can with some something in it uh, in that way that it, it keeps the property clean and it keeps the property safe from starting a fire or something like that as long as they adhere to that I'm okay with it still right around here oh Johnny just testing out that tip so right here we can see the color change we're about to do all of this all right, one thing I want to mention um, is the equipment in this because it was my first year. We started this up with absolutely no money. Um, I, I wasn't, I, I'm, I'm kind of in the scenario that if a business is going to thrive, it'll thrive off the cash flow that it creates. So if I can go out and sell it, and we're talking about service businesses, this is a service business, lawn care is a service business, you can start it with no money. And I know there's like licensing and getting all that stuff ready. Dude, if you're really going to get it going, and don't take this as legal advice, but you're going to be a bit of an outlaw. You're going to do what you have to do. If you got no money, go get that first job. Do what you got to do. Get in there. Use the, the down payment to uh, get everything you have to. That's what I did in this painting business. I didn't put a dime towards it. I decided during the winter I was going to go ahead and start it. It was going to be my cure to make an extra twenty thousand dollars personal income and uh, I can say it, it did that no problem so basically what we did is uh, you know we uh, used the first job and took all the money from that you know uh, the on the down payment and bought our equipment to do the job uh, it was kind of a labor scenario where we were just giving a bid on the labor all the material the customer purchased so right out the bat 50 percent i knew i i was using that on the equipment and uh getting that all taken care of and then when i was done i had 50 percent from the job that i could use i put that all into marketing um, so 50 percent to get the job done 50 percent for the marketing and then from there it was uh it was on man you just distribute door hangers flyers whatever you got to do uh, we use door hangers and uh, put them out there. Um, we went in and we put a lot of estimates in. Um, that's kind of the name of the game with uh, you know, painting. If you want to get jobs, you just pump out estimates. It's kind of similar to lawn care. And then the better you get, the more you land and uh, the more confident you are, the smoother you are with communication, um, the clearer that it is to the customer that you're going to take care of them, the more jobs you're gonna land. Because ultimately, all they want to know is that I have a problem, you have a solution, I don't want headaches, can you solve this for me? The, at least that's the type of customers I want. If you're catering towards more pricing, well, I don't know what to tell you. Be the lowest price and you'll get jobs. That's kind of how it is in the beginning. At one point in time, that's that's where I was. I, I got almost all my jobs from being low priced. Um, but where I was wanting to go with talking about the equipment is like, 
just simple things like that ladders a couple hundred bucks we get an extension ladder it's a couple hundred bucks you got the uh stabilizer on it, a couple hundred bucks you got the drone that i'm flying in the air right now a couple hundred bucks you got uh the sprayer i'm using um i actually buy some equipment uh at pawn shops like the sprayer i'm using is i believe around a thousand dollar sprayer i got it at a pawn shop for a couple hundred bucks Graco in the backyard that that uh johnny's using it's about a four or five hundred dollar sprayer i got it for a couple hundred bucks i think i got it for like 120 actually um but you know that's i'm looking for good investments like i'll buy something brand new like i thought about buying the ladders used but i went and bought them new almost for convenience because you get to this point where you're like okay i can go chase down the facebook craigslist thing and meet up with somebody and it's going to be shady and i'm going to stress out about it and then it's going to be a lot of hassle or i can just go buy this damn thing and save myself a bunch of time on trying to meet up with somebody and that's going to save me money so i'm at the point where my time's getting more valuable because I'm out selling more and performing more jobs that I don't have a bunch of time to go meet up with somebody to save 20 bucks or 30 bucks or whatever it might be. I'd rather just go to the store, buy it brand new and uh, be on my way. Okay. And the other thing is, like I said, just like with the first job, when the jobs are complete, I take that money immediately and invest it into either marketing or um, buying equipment the very first thing I always do is pay my labor okay um, Johnny with the painting company um, it was very important that I, I pay him well I wanted somebody I wanted to know right out the gate that I can pay somebody accordingly but you set that money aside for labor right away don't go spending money that's not yours okay money that's for, for taxes and everything set it aside money that's for labor set it aside if it's not yours you can't spend it all right so just keep that in mind if you spend your money that goes to pay for labor and you don't pay your labor one time if you're late on on their paycheck they're not going to be loyal to you okay now on the other side of that if you for any reason get slow and uh, you slow down they're not going to be loyal to you. Employees are looking for a job, a consistent paycheck. You know, if, if you've ever uh, worked for somebody else, which I'm sure you have, you are needing money. If you work for yourself, you're needing money. You get consistency by going out and hustling. They don't get the same thing. You have to, you have to give them security, um, and that's that's the important thing is giving them security, giving them. Uh, financial income because they're not coming to work to work for charity or to have fun they're coming to work to pay their bills take care of their children um, you know make their car payments and stuff like that so if you have an employee just keep in mind that like that's just good employment skills is to make sure they're well taken care of if they're well taken care of they're gonna take care of you they're gonna be happy with you so obviously you want a good culture where you know like you gotta be a good boss you gotta be a good communicator uh, sometimes there's uncomfortable conversations you're gonna need to talk about talk about them get them out of the way but then also pay them well if, pay them what they're worth pay them more than they're worth and show them that they're worth more so that they will actually grow into that value I used to pay real cheap and I thought that's what you do is you pay real cheap and you know that's how business is good I'm, I can't afford to pay somebody more than ten dollars the fact is ultimately the customer is paying for that employee and if you're catering towards a customer that wants real real cheap service then absolutely you can't afford it and that's why I couldn't afford it because that's who I was catering to if you want to pay somebody good Ultimately, your customer is going to pay pay that price. And they're paying for quality, and they will understand with the quality that they receive. Um, so just keep it in mind that it's not actually coming out of your pocket. Your employee is not costing you anything. An employee will only make you money. An employee costs you money when you are not properly training them and uh, compensating them correctly. Anyways, I was talking about equipment, and what I just wanted to say is like, 
very rapidly your equipment will build up whether it's painting the lawn care or whatever business is business across the board so you know our first several painting jobs I was showing up in my old black Chevy um, I call it the war horse right and uh, she's about to be put down she needs shot she got a broken leg um, <laughs> but you know it's the war horse the thing took me in a battle and uh, we made a lot of money with it for several years uh, it got me to the stage where I could grow more. Well, now, with the painting business, we used that uh, truck for about, I don't know, somewhere around uh, the first three, maybe four jobs, and then we were able to buy the box truck. Now, we bought the box truck at auction. It was, uh, people ask, it was a Mr. Ed's auction, which is basically just a local auction, and it was a... Uh, a Tulsa public school systems box truck um, for it looks like shop trucks it was a mechanical shop truck anyways that that's pretty irrelevant uh, but my point there was that uh, you know I, I was able to find it at a good price but either way I would have been able to buy say a, a van or something like that and uh, have that I actually bought a uh, box truck in a van at the uh, auction together and the reason why I bought two vehicles at the auction uh, is because they were cheap for one but I knew that um, I would turn around and sell one which I did so I bought a box truck and I bought the van and I was like well if one doesn't run then I'm okay I got one that does if they both don't run I can get what I paid for them if one runs and the other doesn't I'll sell it if they both run I'll sell them ultimately they um, I got them both running and I sold the van for eighteen hundred, and I paid three hundred and twenty-five for it. That's just business. Uh, turned around and flipped it, right? So I made some money on it. And my box truck, I paid four hundred and fifty for it. Um, I had to have it towed to my house. That was a couple hundred bucks. Um, and then I had, uh, let's see, I had to put a fuel pump in it, and I put a water pump in it, and some hoses and stuff like that since then but basically I mean the box truck altogether cost me less than a thousand dollars and uh, I made eighteen hundred on on the van minus the expenses from the van I came out and I've got a free vehicle not saying everybody can do that but you know it's one of those things that the more you're in business the more options come onto your plate all right so it's been a very long day we got everything sprayed out it looks awesome they didn't decide yet what they want to do with the shutters and that's okay because we're coming back for the interior in about a week she asked if we could hold off on that as well um, because they have their grandkids going into school and they you know don't want their kids in and out while um, we're trying to work on the house that's an awesome consideration that, that that's that's pretty nice I can deal with that okay so the shutters she's Debating on whether she wants new ones or if she wants them to go back to the same color or different color. That's all good. But really, it looks awesome. We've got some touch-up to do. Very little. Uh, but really, did you see any touch-up? No, I didn't. So we really don't have any touch-up. It looks awesome. We did such extensive prep work that the finished product looks amazing. Uh, we do have a ton of paint chips. So we'll sweep this off. But back behind the bushes, you can see all the paint chips. We're going to come back with the lawn care set up for that. And blow everything out, rake it up, and haul it away. So let's go ahead and look at the side of this, and I'll show you the front and stuff. So, sides, pretty sharp. You can't really see because of the light. We went ahead and threw this in. You know, just a little add-on, make them happy. Um, Everything looks real sharp. This was the worst of it. Um, and we may do some back rolling on it. But I think with as bad as it was, it came out awesome. Looks from the camera, the way it looks on the camera, looks a little flashy, but it's really not bad in person. So overall, I'm very pleased with that. Same thing, quite a bit of extensive cleanup on chips. We cleaned up a lot of them. And I mean a lot. There's still a lot more. That's okay. Um, we did have a change order. We're going to be doing the uh, back deck as well. 
So they want this painted. Um, really no prep on this. He's kind of scraped and sanded and decided he didn't want to do any more on it. So it's pretty much ready to rock and roll on this. So we'll do this. Now, I don't know if I showed you this, but when we come back to do the interior, we're going to scrape this off. This is from when he had previously painted. When they built this on, he painted this and this tape was left. So because it's been on there for several years, I'm not really sure of the best method to remove that, but I'm assuming it involves a razor blade and some gooby gone or goof off. <laughs> I will let you know what works best, but I'm, I would like that gone. Uh, the windows in the front they're replacing and they're replacing some of these aluminum windows in the back. But man, it looked great. It shot well. We used about, um, we got 16 gallons. 16 gallons for this house. The brick was previously painted or else it would have ate up a lot more paint. Um, and it was the same color. But I believe, I believe we're right at 16 gallons. It, sorry, we got 17 gallons and we probably have a couple gallons left. It probably used right at 12, I'm not sure. I don't know. 15. Let's call it 15. Probably 15. What's 17 minus 2? 15. Alright, anyway, so yeah, that looks pretty good. I will have to replace a light bulb. You can see I accidentally sprayed over the light bulb. <laughs> That's alright. It's alright. Um, Johnny, we still got the hose back there. I'm gonna grab that and we are good to go. Um, the garage was pretty rough. If you remember from the very beginning, I don't know if I showed you this, that was the board right there where the Bondo work was done. And it's not textured like the rest of the wood. It's very smooth, but it's not noticeable either. This is some of the previous Bondo work that was done. I just kind of left that because it wasn't nearly as bad as the other ones. Let's go look at that woodwork I did. That half board right there was replaced. This board, this board. This one was puttied up, okay. Um, that one was puttied up and several down this way are puttied up. Can you guess which ones? No, you can't, because they look awesome. So, I have one more side. I'll show you the last side. Overall, I mean, shot great. I used the extension. First time using the extension, and uh, you know that was really nice. I was able to get all the way up and down, very easy. Uh, shot across the brick, real easy, and stand back and and shoot very large sections without moving. Uh, so it's very efficient. Anyways, hope you guys have a good one. This was a great job, phenomenal. Looks great. I uh, look very forward to coming back for the interior work in a couple weeks. I will go ahead and see you guys in the next one.